Hey guys, it's Chris. From ancient armies to lost ruins, join me as I reveal nine amazing archaeological discoveries from China. Number 9. Yang Wanzi Ruins Found in 2017 in Jialing Shashi in China, the ruins are from a very prosperous period from the Yangshao culture, which existed from 5000 to 3000 BC. An important thing to note is the size of the ruins. The burial site within them is 85,000 square meters and contains 2,000 graves, which is much bigger than most burial grounds of that time period by a large margin. What this revelation proves is that this kind of burial site, which is pretty much how the modern world does it now, was starting to form around this time period. It's also believed that the people of the Yangshao culture were learning and trading cultural notions with others who were in the realm that would be China at the time. Guanshao Plain and Western China were there at the period, for example. Furthermore, with this knowledge in hand, certain mysteries of the history of China can also be solved, as there were many archaeological mysteries about the layout and structure of things that this now lays insight into. Number 8. Peking Man A constant desire of mankind in terms of archaeology is to know where man came from and when we evolved. The fossilized remains of primitive man are a great help to this, and in China in the 1920s, certain major bones were found to help fill in this picture. From the years 1929 to 1937, 15 partial crania, 11 mandibles, many teeth, some skeletal bones, and large numbers of stone tools were discovered in the lower cave of locality 1 at what is now called the Peking Man site at Zhou Kodian. At first, due to technology, it was unclear when these bones were left behind. Then in 2009, it was revealed that they were at least 750,000 years old, give or take. Based on the bones and their structure, the Peking Man was recreated in a way so we could visualize what it looked like. Through that, many questions about how the species known as Homo erectus related to humanity as a whole. Some see it as a true ancestor, while others see it as a failed evolution. Number 7. Xinyang Palace Due to the many dynasties that China has had over the millennia, there are many palaces that exist within the country that have been lost to time, one of which was the Xinyang Palace. This palace was part of the Su Yi dynasty, which lasted from 581 to 618 AD. And in 2016, it was finally discovered in the Xinyang ancient city in Shanxi province. The site has been found and researched by the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences and National Museum of China, who investigated the number two archaeological complex ruin in Xinyang ancient city. At first, they felt it was a different building from the dynasty that came after the Suyi dynasty. Mainly, they felt it was from the Tang period, which went from 618 to 907 AD. However, further research proved that this was indeed the palace, mainly because of certain materials that were found on certain stone tablets on the site. Number 6. The Tomb of Yu Hong Yu Hong and his wife were the leaders of the Su Yi dynasty and were buried in 592 AD. Then in 1999, their tomb was accidentally discovered by people from Wang O village in Zhen Yuan district of the city of Taiyuan. This particular finding is important for many reasons, including the fact that it's the only find from this area to mimic the Central Asian culture of the time period. The tomb also helped give historians a deeper look into the emperor known as Yu Hong. For example, he was first part of a nomadic tribe, a long way away from being a leader of a dynasty. He slowly worked his way up, from being a leader of certain affairs of state to being a governor of the previous dynasty. Though his wife died two years later than him, she was buried with him in the same space. As for the layout of the tomb, it was one that was rather small. It had a single chamber composed of brick, as well as a passageway into said chamber. This was part of the reason why the tomb remained undiscovered for so long. The passageway itself was almost entirely destroyed. There were, however, intact marble pillars within the tomb. There were five upon creation, but only a few remained at the end. Not unlike certain other cultures, there were also trinkets within the tomb, including human figures in stone, horse figurines in pottery, white porcelain bowls, two epitaph covers, and stones. The sarcophagus itself was also made of marble, just like the pillars. It was many feet tall and wide, and was placed on a multi-layered support structure that was decorated in the emperor's honor. Number 5. Ruins of Chung and Han City 
Archaeology can be a game of timing as much as anything else. China is known to try and keep certain sites preserved, thus preventing archaeologists from seeking out the truth living within the ground beneath their feet. The discoveries at the ruins of Chung and Han City in 2017 were proof of that patience. Decades prior, the Chung Gong tomb near Lai Jialu was discovered in 1923, but after that discovery, no new digs were allowed via the government. Once a true dig was allowed, many confirmations from Chinese historical texts were confirmed. For example, moats, drains, and drainage pipes were found within the walls, proving that the drainage gates that were written about were in fact accurate. Also, a defense system known as Wang Chung was found. Basically, they were smaller walls built outside of the main walls to help bolster the city and prevent easy access from outside the walls. Number 4 pre-Xin settlements. The Xin dynasty was China's first feudal dynasty and thus held many advantages for the nation. However, in 2017, proof of a settlement on the Canning River Plain in Sichuan province proves that about 1800 years prior there was another area lived, and they lived quite advanced based on the construction of the housing. Mainly about 3500 holes were found in the plains around the river. There were post holes, ones that were meant to hold up shelters that had been built around the time. Also found in the area were square pits which were several feet in length and went down a little ways. This seems to indicate that there was actually crypt like housing in this area of the river as well. This is the second largest finding of pre-Shin housing area in the history of China. Number 3. Western Xia Mausoleums Found at the foot of the Helen Mountains in the Ningxia Wei Autonomous Region of northwestern China, nine mausoleums were discovered that were part of a key part of China's history. The dynasty itself lasted from 1038 to 1227, and it only fell to the legendary Genghis Khan. Yet despite the dynasty lasting nearly 200 years, there are many mysteries about it still left unsolved, some of which lies in the mausoleums that were found. These actually evaded many modern-day explorers for some time, and only in 1938 via an aerial photograph were the mausoleums fully discovered. Work eventually went into them, but only one has been fully explored and excavated, though it is known that the the first of these burial sites was dedicated to the emperor of the dynasty. Number 2. Famen Temple Religion has often played an interesting role in China's history, which can be proven by the finding and then reconstruction of the Famen Temple. As the name suggests, it's found in the Famen town in the Fufeng country. As for when it was constructed, that is a little bit harder to determine. There are reports that it was built in the northern Zhou dynasty by Emperor Hai, and also by Emperor Ling of the Eastern Han dynasty, though this isn't fully proven. It should also be noted that other dynasties stated that the temple was constructed close to their own periods, making its construction all the more intriguing. History does confirm, though, that it's a Buddhist temple, and due to that, the powers that ruled China tried to strike it down forever because they didn't believe in the practice. For example, in the northern Zhou dynasty, the temple was nearly destroyed. Yet in the Se dynasty, Buddhism was praised of a sort, and the temple was rebuilt. This continued for many centuries until the modern age, when the temple was once again almost destroyed. Since then, though, it was fully rebuilt and is now a major part of the country. Number 1. Terracotta Army in China in 1974, one of the major archaeological discoveries of our time was discovered, the lost tomb of the first Chinese emperor. Many don't remember that it was some farmers who were the first to come upon these soldiers, as they were looking for water during a severe drought. Zha Kangmin had uncovered three kneeling men about ten years before, but had never been certain that they belonged to the emperor who ruled the Xin dynasty from 221 to 206 BC. He was passionate about so-called old things, but was worried about what would become of the statues under the Communist Party. Luckily, instead of destroying them, he sent archaeologists to uncover the site. And once they were done, they found 8,000 terracotta statues positioned around the tomb of the emperor in a battle formation. And you no doubt are wondering, what was the point of making all these statues for a late emperor? The followers of Emperor Ti Shi Huang wanted him to be protected in the afterlife, so they buried him with an army as well as horses, so he would have loyal followers at his side should he need them. This is yet more proof of all the different ways the cultures of the world thought about the afterlife and what was needed for the life beyond. Yet what might be the most important part about the terracotta army is the detail in the making of the statues themselves. Each and every member of the terracotta army had its own unique face, which means that each of the 8,000 statues looks like a unique person. 
and most likely modeled after a real person. It's also believed they were all painted with expensive colors. This was widely regarded as one of the greatest archaeological finds in all of China, and the Terracotta Army was an inspiration for the film The Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. The actual tomb of Emperor Ti Shi Huang remains sealed. There could be thousands of precious artifacts inside, but the risks of opening the tomb and irreparably damaging what lay inside means the Chinese government has held off so far. Well, thanks for watching. What did you think of these archaeological finds from China? Which ones do you think stand out above the rest? Which do you think are the best of the bunch? Do you know of any other finds that could have been on our list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.